Rather than providing direct instruction, they opted to use a more subtle approach to motivate and encourage learning. Hello, this is Error. There is a lot of interest gathering around DeepSeek. Since our channel is not an investment channel, I want to focus more on the technical aspects and take a closer look. What you are seeing now is the paper on DeepSeek R1 that came out last week. So essentially, it's about fostering cognitive abilities by offering incentives. This motivational aspect is grounded in reinforcement learning, which I briefly covered in the previous video. At the same time, there's a lot of excitement about the claim that Chinese AI software algorithms have already outpaced those in the US. However, for those who have been closely following the academic papers, it's clear that the reality is more complex than that. There is conclusive proof that DeepSeek has directly drawn from OpenAI's research. Have you heard of Dr. Zhong Yang Hoon, who is part of the team at OpenAI? Dr. Zhong Yang Hoon, who earned his master's degree from Seoul National University, is currently pursuing his PhD at MIT. He has delivered numerous presentations and is now part of OpenAI. Last year, he gave a lecture at MIT, which covered this very topic. So, to summarize this topic further, isn't it ironic that OpenAI, despite its name, operates more like a closed entity? Now, with Chinese companies advancing towards an open ecosystem, let's go over the relevant details. If you search for Dr. Zhang Yang Hoon from OpenAI, you will find his work immediately. This was already discussed last October. Dr. Zhang Yang Hoon from OpenAI has elaborated on incentive-based learning, and there are summaries available. Let's delve into this summary on Meli. And right here, you can see the video clip. This is the actual seminar that Dr. Zhang Yang Hoon presented at MIT, uploaded in its entirety. So Pyong Wan Chung has uploaded his work here directly, and there's a mention about providing motivation, which is quite important. In fact, this idea is very similar to the method through which DeepSeek achieved its impressive results recently. The DeepSeek R1 model is a prime example of how well this approach has been implemented, showcasing its success. So, while you can go through the detailed information here, to really understand what this is all about, it's important to consider not just what DeepSeek has accomplished, but also what Dr. Jung Young Hoon meant by incentivizing. This isn't just about whether China has outpaced the US, it's about recognizing a significant emerging trend in the AI landscape. You can understand it better, and there are aspects where OpenAI is already attempting this approach, so let us take a closer look. In the early morning video I posted today, I discussed the performance of the DeepSeek R1 model and various related topics. First and foremost, I provided an explanation about the DeepSeek R10, remember? The paper doesn't delve into every detail, but it does mention some key points. By employing a technique known as Relative Policy Optimization, or GRPO, it delves into the strategies for determining how rewards should be given in reinforcement learning. Through this approach, and after undergoing multiple iterations, it demonstrated the ability to autonomously generate very long chains of thought through self-reinforcement learning. This essentially means that the horizontal axis represents the passage of time. As time progresses and we take longer intervals, the average length of the responses increases significantly. The more extended the time, the longer the chain of thought continues, with the prompts themselves evolving through self-directed thinking, continually extending the tail of the thought process. They extend the response duration to address the prompt more thoroughly. Although I did not cover this earlier today, a detailed look at the paper reveals how they structured the reward system. During the transition from 0 to R1, they discuss the use of cold start data for training and other related methodologies. Let's take a moment to delve into how we can effectively model rewards in this context. Here, in section 2.2.2, it mentions reward modeling. In this section, there is a mention of what is known as accuracy reward. It is explained that if the answer is very close to being correct, a high reward is given to incentivize accurate responses. Moreover, if the answer is incorrect, the paper suggests assigning a much lower reward. It emphasizes the importance of giving clear and definitive rewards rather than ambiguous ones. Additionally, the section on format rewards evaluates how well the response is structured and whether it adheres to the correct format. Structured and likely correct responses get rewarded. In this way, it decides how to provide rewards. Then it talks about the aha moment of DeepSeek R1, starting from zero with absolutely nothing. The DeepSeek model didn't have any initial data training and only used reinforcement learning. As it trained, it reached a moment of insight. At first, it used simple methods to find answers. But as it kept receiving rewards, it realized certain methods were more accurate. It kept thinking, if I do it this way, I get a reward. If I do it this way, I get a reward. Ah, there's a moment of understanding like, oh, this is how it should be done. This trait was rarely observed in conventional LLMs. Nevertheless, since this method alone isn't sufficient, when transitioning from DeepSeek R10 to DeepSeek R1, they begin by extensively training the model with cold start data. This helps in guiding the model's initial direction. By utilizing reinforcement learning, similar to what was done with the Zero model, we achieved remarkable performance, even outshining OpenAI's leading models. This was achieved at a minimal cost, which is why it's currently a hot topic. Focusing solely on the algorithm, it's evident that performance can be significantly enhanced through reinforcement learning with clearly defined rewards. When we tried it, we optimized the algorithm well. This particular example was actually brought up during a seminar conducted by Dr. Jung last year. 
During his initial seminar, Dr. Jong Young Hoon delves into a variety of subjects in different directions. The traditional method of training LLMs involves continuously feeding them data, which has been the standard approach. Dr. Yong Young Hoon points out that this method has significant limitations as it follows a straightforward teaching style. This can hinder the model's ability to generalize effectively and limit its capacity to address finer details comprehensively. There is a possibility that this information could be forgotten. Referring back to the concept of incentivizing, instead of issuing specific commands to the model, you could try encouraging the desired actions by offering rewards such as chocolates and candies. In the same way, rather than constantly telling children to study, you can provide motivation through incentives. He is highlighting that providing rewards, such as giving pocket money for good grades, is a highly effective strategy to leverage reinforcement learning techniques to boost the model's latent capabilities. So, rather than continuously teaching in a specific way, the key point is that it can lead to much more creative and flexible problem-solving methods because it finds ways to achieve goals through self-directed learning. Then, if you go further, they talk about which parts are difficult, and at around the 21-minute mark, you will find this discussion coming up. A model with minimal incentives starts to show its capabilities. This occurs without any direct instruction. What we're talking about here is the idea of providing just a slight amount of motivation. As I mentioned previously, similar to AlphaGo Zero, which didn't rely on the traditional strategies of Go developed over millennia by humans. Instead, it was simply given the objective to win by adhering to the rules of Go, and it managed to achieve remarkable success. This happens because when you deliberately provide incentives, it unintentionally leads to creative outputs, causing issues with things that were not directly taught or learned. What problems arise from this? Hallucinations occur immediately. Due to improper training, false information like the manager threw a MacBook emerges. Some believe this issue could help solve the hallucination problem. Therefore, DeepSeek has effectively leveraged this to propose that by mastering reinforcement learning algorithms, it is possible to achieve results without incurring hardware costs. They may have taken inspiration from such discussions and experimented with various approaches, or even if they did not, AI researchers have been diligently working in this direction. We can speculate this might be true. Remember our earlier model, Strawberry. It was believed that these techniques were based on reinforcement learning. Since then, discussions about reinforcement learning have emerged. It is truly impressive that they managed to implement this. To implement this effectively, an advanced algorithmic model was required. DeepSeek, for instance, was introduced as an open source platform, enabling widespread development and expansion. This strategy aims to challenge the dominance of big tech companies, leaving firms like Meta in turmoil. From a development perspective, Android exemplifies an open source model. If we think of Apple as embodying the iOS model, we can see that rather than one completely overtaking the other, they have found a way to coexist. In the end, companies will continue to push for distinctive advantages. So let's recap the main points. This has been an error. Wishing everyone a happy new year.